This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. Glad to have you with us. I'm Roby Brock. I am joined by Cindy Gillespie. She's the director of the Department of Human Services for the state of Arkansas. Good to have you back with us. Thank you, Roby. Good to be here. I guess your agency is going to get some sort of renaming at some point in time in the near future, but we'll worry about that at the okay. appropriate time. Today, you're the DHS director. Let's talk about Arkansas Works. Obviously, the, the big ruling this week from the, the federal judge, uh, the, the federal government is going to be the one that will do the appeal on this. You're an intervener in this, as the state of Arkansas is. Tell me what you think the judge got wrong in this ruling. What was the fallacy of his argument as to why Arkansas Works cannot stand as it is? I think um, there's a number of elements that I think he got wrong. For one thing, we really do believe that work, community engagement, someone not being isolated and by themselves, all the studies show that that is incredibly important to their health. It is a part of a healthy environment. I mean, it's one of the reasons why in some of our other Medicaid programs, um, we, have, we have programs for the developmentally disabled, for example, that support employment, right? Because why? It helps them have a healthier life. So we feel like he got, got those pieces wrong. He got wrong, um, you know, he, he develops the idea that if people lose Medicaid coverage, they are uninsured. No, I mean, the whole point of a lot of the efforts we have underway are to help people move out of poverty and up that income ladder. So we have people all the time who become not covered by Medicaid because their income is higher right. and they're now insured by an employer. That doesn't mean because they lost coverage they are uninsured. So when you look at the ruling, and uh, again, uh, uh, this is likely to be appealed. I know the mm -hmm. governor has pushed for the, uh, the feds to do this. Do you, are you already looking at some potential solutions for how you could address some of the concerns that the judge listed there, the modifications that you could make to, to, to make the state program more suitable to some of the arguments he raised? I, I think there's sort of two uh, issues that you're talking about there. The appeal is going to be something that we're encouraging HHS and DOJ to, to expedite an appeal and move quickly. And they have to look at the judge's um, decision and what arguments can be made as to why our program is okay and how we can further bolster that, right, in those arguments. Meanwhile, back here, we're, we're focused on an appeal right now. We're focused on supporting an appeal, not on modifying our program. We still believe in, we still believe in the work requirement. We still believe in community engagement. Mm -hmm. And our focus as we're in this, what we're calling our pause period, while we hopefully are able to uh, win the legal battle and be able to resume, our focus right now is on continuing the work that we've been doing to try to connect the people who are in Arkansas Works to services that can help them build skills, find a job, get an education. And we're, we're gonna keep that going. I mean, we have a lot of aggressive efforts that we believe are paying off in that way. And um, you know, when we talk about it internally, what we say is we're not gonna let the judge's ruling mean that we just leave people in poverty. We are still going to focus on how we move people up that income ladder. Will you still be having to re-enroll or get the people that have been kicked out of the system for whatever reason, do they get enrolled back into the program again? They've always been, able, not since January 1st of this year, sure. they've been able to re-enroll. So the judge's ruling doesn't change that in any way. They still can come and re-enroll if, in fact, their income is still or they would be eligible for yeah. Medicaid. Does it put a pause on the ones that were in jeopardy of losing their insurance? They won't lose their insurance. Um, we've started all the processes and procedures operationally to make sure that um, no one loses their insurance coverage. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that was set for uh, the first group was set for their coverage to end on April 1st, so on Monday. So we've been going through a lot of IT work this week and operational procedures to make this, sure that it doesn't happen. This a question I have, and, and I, I look at the monthly reports that come out in terms of uh, the reasons why somebody might mm -hmm. uh, not be, uh, or might lose their um, expanded Medicaid coverage. They are moving up the income ladder. We know there's a subset of the uh, universe that does that. Some you just can't find. Correct. What is the disconnect between the, the way that they're enrolled in insurance, which I presume are carriers 
aren't enrolling them and you guys not having the information you need to connect with them to have that communication line. What, what, why is that disconnection there? They're um, actually enrolled by us, okay. not by the carrier, but um, several, several things happen. Um, individuals frequently are, come to us, provide the information, and they're enrolled, but they may not update their information. All right. So someone could have uh, gone on the program back in 2014 and hasn't updated their information all these years, mm -hmm. right? So we may have very old addresses for them. The second thing is um, they, individuals are often enrolled when they go to a hospital or to a clinic. They will see that they're uninsured and they'll help them enroll there. In that case, they often do it by paper. They'll fill out the forms, the person signs the forms, they send it to us. We never have any contact directly with the individual in mm -hmm. that case, right? So. Again, their information may never get updated. Part of the changes we've been making in Arkansas Works has, have been around trying to reach these individuals. That's one of the reasons we've had AFMC calling everyone, see if we can find them, see if we can get their information updated. We are um, doing more and more efforts to really go from, um, to really focus in on where do you live and can we verify that you live there so that we can get our roles where we know where people are. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's been one of the things I think you've heard all of us talk about it that has been a, a very big um, learning lesson in, in, in Arkansas Works work and community engagement requirement is to realize we don't have accurate information on a number of these people and, and we're trying to get it. I have to ask you the doomsday scenario question sure. here. Let's say that the, the judge's ruling is upheld through the appellate process there and Arkansas Works, I guess, would effectively end the work requirement if that happened. That could lead to lack of support in the legislature, thousands, hundreds of thousands losing this expanded Medicaid coverage. Yeah. What would the consequences of that be? I think you, um, I think you have to realize that the appellate process in this case will probably go all the way to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. and there's nothing rapid about that process so it's going to be a multiple level so if we uh, I'm, again it will be up to the federal government how far they take it but you have so many states not just us but there are six or seven other states already that have approval for a work requirement and there are others in the wings right so this is not um, this is not a policy that the federal government is going to walk away from easily nor are we and so it is one that you could expect to see go through if it does not make it in the appellate level to keep going on up to Supreme Court. With that said, um, I think the governor has made clear his commitment to Arkansas Works as we go through this process. Um, our waiver, our current Arkansas Works waiver ends at the end of 2021. And so somewhere in 20, we will all be looking for the redesign of what the next version looks like anyway. So this is a multi-year process. Right in the middle of the appellate process, exactly. frankly, this if is, it goes to the Supreme Court. It could be. So this is going to be a multi-year process if, if we don't win, but that is why the governor is saying, let's seek expedited appeal. Let's go ahead and get us back into the program and get the work requirement going How like it should be. How catastrophic would it be, though, for this hundreds of thousands that are on the program now to lose that insurance? Um, for most of those on the program right now, there is not an alternative. Um, there's, um, they, the ones above 100% of federal poverty level would qualify for the exchange, as you know, the, right. the marketplace plans and the federal government giving them something. And um, Currently, Arkansas's only other category for individuals would be those who are parents and caretakers and have incomes below 32% of federal poverty level. So there, there would be um, a substantial group um, that would be sitting there in that middle um, and would not have another alternative. There would also be a very large budget impact on the state as well, as you know. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's not a, it's not a simple, program to change or to walk away from, it would have ramifications on the providers in the state. It, it would have ramifications. All right, we'll watch the uh, process as it moves along. DHS Director Cindy Gillespie, as always, good to be Thank with you. Thank you, Roby. Right. Appreciate it. We're back with more right after this.